Bismillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa nwala amma ba'd fa'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim qala tabarakahu wa ta'ala ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu taqullaha haqqa tuqatih wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri wa hlul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli wa ja'al li wazilan min ahli amin ya rabbal alamin so the topic for today's conversation or today's khutbah is uh, how to advise effectively and there are seven seven guidelines which we have to follow how to advise each other how to criticize or advise each other following seven methods from sunnah and this is so important topic because as we live in the community it's it's extremely relevant so i as a father need to advise my kids but do i know how to advise my son and daughter most of us know the importance of advising but very few of us actually get the chance to listen to these scholars and open the quran and hadith and see what are the principles quran and sunnah gave us in terms of advising each other uh, similarly if i want to advise my spouse do i know how do i have to advise from an islamic perspective many a times the marital life is being destroyed because husband is too critical of our wife or wife doesn't even know how to take that criticism similarly in the community in the friend circle a employee employee and employer relationship as an employer you want to actually advise your employees but do you really know even from psychological standpoint how should i advise so well, this is extremely important topic you as a community member need to advise the board members need to advise the imam or maybe i as an imam need to advise any community member how to advise from an islamic perspective this is extremely important topic not only because rasulullah sallallahu said ad dinun nasiha that deen is based on sincere advice so this is for muslim this is extremely important topic how do i advise uh, other brothers and sisters in community but even from psychological standpoint we have to understand this there are works which ulama have done i will for each and every point i will going to bring a brief reference inshallah you do not have to lost yourself into those references just pay attention into these seven points inshallah point number 1 how to advise each other ibn rajab alhamdulillah rahimahullah he wrote actually an essay al farq bayna an nasiha wa at ta'yir he says make sure when you are advising someone do not insult him so advising someone and insulting someone they are two different things according to ibn rajab rahimahullah you know our intention actually it all boils down to intention what is your intention when you are advising someone is your intention is sincere enough to correct someone or your intention is to show the person how knowledgeable you are how superior you are what is your intention subhanallah do i really want to advise him sincerely because i'm concerned about him or her or i'm just jealous of people praising him or his fame or so on and so forth what is my intention that's number one thing we need to remember subhanallah you know it's interesting the arabic word for advising is nasiha nasiha if you go back to the dictionary how arabs have used this word before even quran have used this as a nasiha or, or a hadith have used this as a nasiha in in lisan al arab they would say wa min dhalika qawl al arab zahab al nasih yani salim min al ghash when the gold is pure they would say this is actually nasih there is no impurities attached to it when the honey is pure raw honey they would say this is actually asl al nasih this is pure honey they would use the word nasiha nasih for that so any advice which is pure sincere sincerity out of love there is no other agendas that should be our way of giving advice to each other subhanallah look at us look at us right now if we are advising each other by screaming and yelling at each other or maybe at insulting at each other then we are not following the protocols given to us by islam subhanallah that's number one thing advise him or her but do not insult him or her second point second point it should be done in private not in public who said this there are scholars imam shafi said this imam ibn hazm said this rahimahum allah imam shafi actually said in a very beautiful saying he says man wa'aza akhahu sirran faqad nasahahu he says if you are advising your brother or sister in private then that's advice 
if you are advising your brother or sister in public, then that's an insult, not advice. That's a humiliation. Subhanallah. You know how we advise each other? On the WhatsApp group. Hundreds of people are there. Right? That's how we advise. On Facebook. On Twitter. And I'll tell you the exceptions. But think about it for a minute. Is that the genuine way of advice after learning all these principles? If you are seriously concerned and if you have an approach to the individual brother, reach out to him or her privately. Subhanallah. Ibn Hazm rahimahullah said something very interesting. He says, nasahta fan sirran wa la jahran wa bi la bi tasrihin. Ibn Hazm says, if you want to give advice to someone, give him hint. Give him hint towards advice. Do not speak bluntly about that matter unless the person is naive and then you have no other option. But give him hint. He's smart enough, she's smart enough to know what you are trying to say. Don't speak bluntly about the matter and speak to them in a private way. Don't, in, don't just make a scene in public. Subhanallah. You know, to advise someone in public is already an insult. And then to add insult to an injury, we don't even know the difference between advising and gossiping or advising and backbiting. So let's say if you are advising someone from the community in a WhatsApp group, that's an insult in itself. But to add insult to an injury, you're advising that brother or sister who is not even there in that WhatsApp group. <laughs> this is gossiping. This is tarnishing his or her reputation. Wallahu mustaan. So this is completely backbiting. This is actually a different topic, subhanAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to understand these things, inshallah. Before we can move to point number three, can we advise someone in public? And the answer to this is generally no, but there are exceptions. Generally, we should be considerate of the feelings of people and we should take them to the corner in an isolation where no one is listening to us and tell them with a genuine way what is our concern. But there are few exceptions. Remember this, there is this not exception, not the general rule that when you are supposed to correct someone, advise someone in public, when the message becomes important than the individual, then you have to advise them in public. Like for example, if I am, I am leading Salah, and if I am saying, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْقَوِي Let's say, وَالْقُوَى If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, instead of saying, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْ I will change the words from وَالْفَتْ to anything else. Now, you are going to immediately correct me during the Salah. You don't have to say, actually I have to wait for Salah to be finished. And once Salah will be done, I have to go to Imam Asif, I have to correct him because I have to be do in private. No, because it's the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What about people will leave immediately after Salah? And I won't get a chance to correct the word of Allah. Word of Allah is more important than our feelings. So when the message is more important than the individual, then you do this. But this is an exception, not the general rule. Don't take this as a general principle to be blunt and then to be rude at the same time. Similarly, if, if, if one person is, is speaking in the interfaith program and if he's giving a wrong message to the interfaith audience that we in Islam, we consider Prophet Muhammad as a son of God also, you have to stand and say to him with all due respect that this is not our belief and you have to correct because that's in public and people will take a wrong message. That's where the message is more important than the person. But this is exception. Not a general principle. General principle is you should consider the feelings of people. Third, and again, this is ex everything is backed by subhanAllah scholarly opinion. First point was that advising is different than insulting. Second, it should be done in private, not in public. Third point, it should be done on the basis of knowledge on the basis of a proof, on the basis of evidence. Imam Sheikh Sa'di rahimahullah brings it up and Imam Shafi also actually says about this. It is possible that when a person is advising someone 
it is quite possible that you might get a counter advice. You'll come to me and say, Imam if you said this and this and this in your khutbah, it doesn't make any sense. Okay, Jazakallah Karan brother. But I have this evidence from Quran and Hadith. So you got the counter advice. Now, if you are not making it an ego issue, you should accept that. And this is very hard, by the way. If you are getting, if you are giving advice, and then you got counter advice, and yet then you have to accept because the other person have the proof or evidence. And this will test our sincerity. And if you are not sincere, do not even go there to advice. This is haram for you if you are not sincere in your advice. Subhanallah. Actually, Imam Shafi Rahmanullah says something very beautiful. He says um, about why he debates with the people. So he says, وَمَا نَظَرْتُ أَحَدًا إِلَّا وَلَمْ أُبَالِي بَيَّنَ اللَّهُ بَيَّنَ اللَّهُ الْحَقَّ عَلَى لِسَانِ أَوْ عَلَى لِسَانِهِ He says, I never debated with a person except with the intention of knowing the truth, either from my tongue or from his tongue. That's the intention of um, I'm debating. When we usually debate with each other, we want to wrestle each other down. Imam Shafi says, if, if that's the case, do the debate. Whether truth will come from him or from you. Subhanallah. Uh, fourth, and by the way, this is very important for the community level. Point number four. We always have to pay attention or note the X factor. We have to note the X factor before advising each other. I'll tell you what it is. Before you advise other person, you have to know your relationship with the other person. If that's your close friend of the same circle, then you can be blunt, black and white, and the other person have to be okay with that. But if there are different factors involved, if you are a young person, teenager, who barely came out of diapers, early 20s, and you are advising someone in 50, 60, 70, I'm not saying just don't advise when you see something bad, but know your limit and know your reality. Because that other person have more life experience than your entire age. <laughs> so you need to be very careful, very polite, very gentle, very respectful in your advice, in the selection of your words. And so not only on age, in different fields also. But let's, let's take example of the age. I was reading the, um, the, the booklet from Sheikh Saleh Al-Munajjid. And he was actually sharing this incident. A famous, famous incident of Hassan and Hussein uh, about how they corrected a old person. By the way, who is Hassan and Hussein? They are the grandsons of Prophet Muhammad. Just remember this. They saw a person in the masjid, old person, a Jews, old person, making mistake in wudu. Now, if you know, this is the first thing which you will teach your kids how to make wudu. This is the first teach which we usually teach in Sunday school, how to make wudu. First chapter in the book of fiqh is about the wudu. And if the old person doesn't know, you might say, Astaghfirullah, you're living at the time of Hassan and Hussain radiallahu anhuma, and you don't even know this, subhanallah, you will insult him. But Hassan and Hussain radiallahu anhuma, they know the importance of wudu, but at the same time, they know the importance of how to advise. So they made a plan and they went to this old person and they told this, Ya Abana, oh Ya Sheikh. He said, Oh, our father, or Oh Sheikh. Hatha Akhi Al Hussein, Yakul inna hu yatawadda ahsanu minni. This is my brother Hussein. Hassan said, This is my brother Hussein. And he says, he, he claims that he makes wudu better than me. And I say that I make wudu better than him. Fahkum anta baynana. Why don't you judge us? We will make wudu in front of you. We both will make wudu in front of you. And you can judge between us. And he said, okay. Look, look at these styles, subhanAllah. They both didn't come to him with all guns blazing. Say, by the way, we are grandsons of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And this is the way our grandfather told us how to do wudu. So let us teach you. No, 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 no. Even though they are at the highest level. But they say, okay, can you, can you correct us? Let's just, just, just see us who is making wudu in a proper way. And then they start making wudu. Um, and then, فَأَحْسَنَ الْوُدُوُ تَوَدَّ الْحُسَيْنِ فَأَحْسَنَ الْوُدُوُ Hassan made the wudu, Hussain made the wudu, Radiyallahu anhumah. And they both made a beautiful wudu. 
sunanihi. They did not leave any sunnah when they were making that wudu. When they are done with it, the, 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 the narration says, Summa iltafata ila rajul yantazuran minhul hukum. They both start looking at that old man. Didn't say anything. And then that old man realized what these two young people are trying to teach them. And then he said, actually, I realized I was the one who was making wudu in a wrong way. And I should correct myself, subhanAllah. This is a way to advise someone, especially when there is an age factor involved. Many a times as a kid, you are right. Maybe your parents, whatever they are doing in some aspect, they are wrong. But the way you are bringing it up to them is wrong. It's inappropriate. They are, the, they are your parents. They have changed your diapers and you won't realize this until you will have your own kids. That how much struggle you have to, they have to go through it, subhanAllah. Give some respect. Even if you want to advise them, advise them in a respectful way, subhanAllah. And this is not only for age. We have to know the X factor. If you want to advise a medical doctor on the medicine, are you a medical doctor? If not, then find an appropriate way and do your research before. If you want to advise the scholars, and if you are not the scholar, do your research before and find an appropriate way and so on and so forth. That's how we should pay attention and how to advise each other in an appropriate way, subhanAllah. So I told you four things. First, difference between advice and insult. Second, do it privately, not in public, unless there is an exception. Third, you have to do it on the basis of knowledge. Don't say, oh, I think you should do this. No, if you have a knowledge, evidence, proof, then go ahead. Don't use, I guess, I think, this, this is a whispers of shaitan. Fourth, fourth, that know the X factor. If the age, is, age difference is there, if the field difference is there, knowledge difference is there, you have to pay attention to all these factors, subhanAllah. Fifth, we should choose a appropriate time for our advice. You cannot give unsolicited advice to everyone at all the time. And you might say, Imam Asif, where you are bringing this from? Actually, this is a saying of Abdullah ibn Masood radiallahu anhu fi sahaba He actually said this. He says, Inna li hazihi al-qulub shahwatan wa iqbalan wa inna laha fatratan wa idbaran fa khuduha inda shahwatiha wa iqbaliha He says, subhanAllah, Abdullah ibn Masood radiallahu anhu said that people, energy fluctuates. The ability for the people to receive an advice fluctuates. So advise them when they are in receptive mode and when they are in energetic mode. And stay away from them. Don't advise them when they are not in receptive mode. Look at Yusuf alayhi salam in Surah Yusuf. He wanted to advise those two prisoners about shirk. The biggest advice you can give to any individual is leave the shirk. But he waited for that time until those two prisoners came to him for some spiritual help and then he advised them wait wait for the time you might have the most powerful advice but if you have a if you select the wrong time it won't have an impact it won't have an impact same facebook post same twitter tweet if it came at a right time it will make wonders but at a wrong time it will be just like a casual tweet you know, subhanAllah, the reason why I'm saying this, select a proper time. I have seen, subhanAllah, in community, we are lacking this. If a person's father died, and let's say, most means, honestly speaking now, most of us doesn't know the entire fiqh of janazah, fiqh of funeral. If this individual doesn't know how to pray salat of janazah, and his father, his mother passed, loved one passed away, that's not the time to tell him you wasted your entire life. You didn't get a chance to learn how to pray Salatul Janazah. Astaghfirullah. That's not the time. He's emotionally broken. To teach him Salatul Janazah or the Fiqh of Janazah was before. Not on that day when his father died. Subhanallah, sometimes we think if we got religious knowledge, it, it will give us license to thrill or license to be sarcastic. No, no. So again, very important. Select an appropriate time when the person is in the receptive mode. Last two things, last two things. Sixth is feedback does not only mean negative. 
You know, many times you'll come, you'll say, Mama Sif, I have a feedback for you. Does it mean positive? <laughs> no, right? Feedback means negative. That, that's in our subconscious mind. But if you want to follow traditions of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, feedback means positive and negative both. And you need to ask yourself, you need to ask yourself, if I'm giving this person only negative feedback, negative feedback, it tells a lot about your sincerity or your method. Did I ever give this person any positive feedback in my life? Did I ever compliment him along with the negative feedback? Just like Rasulullah would use to deal with his Sahaba. In one hadith in Ibn Majah, he said that Abu Dhar Ghaffari radiallahu an is Isa alayhi salam of this ummah. It's a very huge parallel. Because Isa alayhi salam, he said it in a way of zuhud, in a way of his spirituality. That one of my companion, Abu Zar, he's Isa of the ummah in terms of his spirituality. Because he was a very spiritual person. In terms of fasting, in terms of nafil salah. In one other hadith in Ibn Majah, he says, Ma aqallatil ghabara wa la adhallatil khadara min rajulin asdaqa lahjatin min abi dhar. That there is no one on the face of the earth who speaks more truthful than the tongue of Abu Zar Ghaffari radiallahu anhu. Can you imagine the higher level of Abu Zar? Is he giving positive feedback to Abu Zar? Yes. Is he complimenting Abu Zar? Yes. But then Abu Zar said something which is not acceptable. He said something offensive about the color of his skin of Bilal radiallahu anhu. Another incident. And racism have no place in Islam. So in other hadith in Bukhari, when Rasulullah noticed Abu Zar is saying something offensive about the color of Bilal radiallahu an, he actually says, Ya Abu Zar, inna ka umru'un fi ka jahiliya. Says Abu Zar. But he says, Abu Zar, today you have proven that you still have some characteristics of the days of ignorance and jahiliya. This is not acceptable in Islam. Same Abu Zar who is Isa. Same Abu Zar whom you are saying that he says always truthful things. But when he does something wrong, you criticize him. And Abu Zar had no issue عنه, in accepting from Rasulullah وسلم, not because it's coming from Rasulullah only, that's, that's the number one thing. But Rasulullah knew how to balance the advice. Do we do this? Do we balance our negative feedback with the positive feedback? Ask yourself. Ask yourself. And this tells us one more thing, these two stories. That on one occasion he's praising Abu Zar, on another occasion he's criticizing Abu Zar. We swings like pendulum when it comes to advice. When we don't like something, because see, all of us, we are not angels. We will do, we will have our shortcomings, we will do mistakes. If we are criticizing someone for their shortcoming, and you should follow the proper method, it does not mean that you should wipe all the good things which that brother or sister have done in other aspects. This is our problem. Oh, that brother had that issue, this brother had this issue. Okay, but they have some good things also. Take benefit, compliment the good things, and make dua for the bad things and advise them for the bad things. That's it. This is a balanced way of dealing with the people. Last thing before we can end, inshallah. Last thing before we can end. As we are learning this method of advising and what is a pr appropriate way of advising each other, just remember this, your mind should not be preoccupied in looking at the flaws of others so that you can give them feedback and advice. This is very important, very important. Many a times you say, okay, now I know how to advise. Now I can advise each and every one. Now you will look at the flaws. Okay, that person is doing something, he needs my advice. That sister is doing something, she needs my advice. You should not volunteer yourself in looking at the flaws of other brothers and sisters and then to advise them unless it is exposed to you. Unless it is exposed to you. Because there's a hadith in Abu Dawud. If a person, if a person will look at the flaws of people and then a person will be to expose to the people, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will expose that individual. And that will be a big humiliation. Allahumma sura awratina wa amir awratina. Ameen ya Rabb. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us wisdom and understanding while dealing with each other and while um, 
uh, improving and correcting each other, inshallah. Allahumma ansur al-Islam wa al-Muslimin. Allahumma ghazur man khazal al-Dina Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa la taj'alna ma'ahum. Allahumma la taj'alna zamman illa ghafarta wa la hamman illa farajta. Allah